We're good. We're good. Thank you guys for your patience. Sure. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us
to come here this early in the morning to come here to be with you, to hear your voice. There are people that are, risk lives to meet together in certain countries. People risk their lives to come and just assemble to, together to praise you, to read their Bible, Father God. They're, they're under the threat of death if they're caught doing so. This is such a privilege, Father. children, they need to know you better. We need to know you better. I pray that you just bless my voice, bless my mind that I can speak truth here today, Father God, that I can reveal you to them, Father God, that I can make you attractive to my brothers and sisters, Father God, so they are so drawn to you that they will, they they no longer put walls between you and them. Your sin has been dealt with. Our sin has been dealt with. There's no more blockage between us and you, Father. We can come boldly to your throne of grace and receive mercy and grace any time we need it, Father. We can look forward to that day of judgment because we're not going to be judged. Father, we come here to learn about that, learn about Jesus, to come and grow in our grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, Father God. Let this message be from your heart. Bless us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Woohoo. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's do this. I got a little click I'm going to play for you, and I'm going to take off from that clip. Okay, I want you to hear something, because I was talking, we've been talking a lot about the law, and we looked last week at that scripture that says that the law is... Now, the law is perfect. Ten commandments, all the laws, they're all perfect. The problem is that we're not and that we can't keep them. So the law, the Bible says the law is, 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 is um, when used properly, how does it say it? The law, the law is... But when it's used properly, it's, it's a law, it's a beneficial. Yeah, in, in, in yeah the law is it. beneficial when used properly. Yeah. But it is not for a righteous person. Okay. What does that mean? I, t I mentioned in a class, I talked about this show called The Way of the Master. If you want to, you can go online, uh, you can go on, um, on YouTube and you can Google Way of the Master series and you can get playlists of these guys. I sent it to you, a playlist of Way oh, of the Master. Okay. And what they do, what they do, what these guys do, it's Kirk Cameron, who is from the show Growing Pains. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Well, he, he, he stopped being an actor to go into ministry. I mean, he had his whole life ahead of him. He had his, 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 his class was... His God got to him. His show Good morning. Good morning. on the top hit list. It was one of the best shows. And he just stepped out of it because he got a calling to, to, to the ministry instead from the Lord. And he felt, you know, I need to do that instead. And so he's using his acting skills to actually go out there and, and talk to people. What do they do is they take a camera crew, they go out to the streets, and they talk to people, and they ask them, do you believe in God? Do you believe in an afterlife? What do you think, what do you think happens after you die? Don't be scared. What do you think happens after you die? And they got a camera crew, and what he does is he's got what, what's called um, icebreakers. Yes. He'll come out, and he'll have like a $1,000 bill or something. It's, it looks real. It looks like a real, it looks like a $100 bill, and he's got a 1000 on it. And if you look real close, there's something saying it's not real, but it, on the out, it actually looks real. And he comes out and he says, I, got, I want to give you $1,000. Can I give you $1,000? He gives it to him. They're like, they see the bill, and they're like, oh, what is that? You know? And it's just something to start a conversation. He says, well, you know, can I ask you a few questions? He started asking them things about God. You know? And he, they go to colleges. They go to, to amusement parks. They go out to the beach. They go to theme parks. Oh, they go all over the place. And, and you see how he's talking to some real educated people, college students. And, and you see their perspective on the afterlife, the, what they think about God and things. And they ask them questions. You but, should be 30 Yeah. But what's interesting is what he uses the law for is to point these people to Jesus to help them see. Because most of them say, you know, yeah, I'm a pretty good person. You know, there's a heaven. I'll get there. You know, this and that. And he says, well, can I ask you some questions to see if that's true about you being a good person? And, mm -hmm. they, you know, and, and he starts asking him, he says, well, have you ever told a lie? You know, and I mean, uh, you ever, ever stolen anything? You ever, you know, and he talks about you're taking the Lord's name in vain. And he used the law to show them they're not good. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and he says, if you stood before God on judgment day and you, you know, he judged you according to the Ten Commandments, 
would you think you'd be guilty or, or you know what I mean? And so he shows them that they're guilty. They're going to stand before God guilty of sin. And then he takes them into the gospel message and takes them into the, the message of Jesus Christ. And, and, and that's the thing. The key thing is you don't have to, we, it's not our job to convince people of the truth. It's our job to tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So oh you, you plant a seed and you, and, and you leave it alone. And, and Bob, the Bob Paul even says that I plant a seed, Apollos waters it, but God has to make it grow. See, so our, we just plant a seed, we just share it, you know, and what they do with it, that's on them, you know, and so, but it's, you know, and here's the thing, this is what you've got to understand, okay, listen, you, you have a table, mm-hmm. and when you take a tablecloth, you put it over the table, okay, right, so you don't see the table anymore, right, what do you see? The tablecloth. The tablecloth, yeah. right? Okay, and that's what the Old Covenant does. That's what the law did under the law and the animal sacrifices, the blood animal sacrifices. It was like a tablecloth that would just cover your sins. God would not see them. Just like you cannot see the table, all you see is the tablecloth. God would not see your sins because of the animal blood, that, because of the sacrifices they were making. He could not see their sins. Whoa, but Yeah. Great. Yeah. Cannot do that. He could not see their sins. Because, and and it, that would be for a year. It was the Day of Atonement. It covered their sins for a whole year, and God could not see their sin for a year. It's not there, right? It's animal blood. So, but listen, under the New Testament, oh. you ever see a magic trick where they take a little cloth and they throw it over something and all of a sudden things not there? Mm-hmm. Under the New Testament, when God covered this table, if it was covered with the tablecloth of the blood of Jesus, when it, what it does, all of a sudden, the table is not just covered, it's disappeared. Yeah. Your sins are gone. They've been removed. It's a whole different program. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. You want yeah, your sins good. covered by animal blood? You'd want them removed by the blood of Jesus. And it's by grace. And that's, what, and that's why it takes faith, faith to believe in that kind of grace. That's grace, giving you what you don't deserve. He says it's not by works. You don't, that means you don't earn it. And it says he justifies the ungodly. That means you don't deserve it. And if you believe that, he'll take your faith and give you righteousness. Right standing before God because of your faith. That's what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. Another huh. thing is that too many people believe in so many things which is think. Oh, that's faith. That's faith. Yeah, everything is faith. Whatever you want to do is faith. You have faith, you have that. You have faith, you have that. You fight. And, and it's not, you better be careful, but some people think that by that faith I'm going to be saved. By works, by faith, I don't know what they believe in it. They have faith in that. And it's not Jesus' faith that they have in yeah, their lives. Yeah, because everybody has faith. Mm-hmm. You know, I have faith that I sit in this chair, I've got to have faith that this chair is going to hold me up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, it, I've built up my faith. To, I've been sitting in enough chairs to know that they, they hold you up pretty good, you know? Right. So I, I have faith to know that, that, chair, that I can sit in that chair. I'm not worried about it's going to break. Because right. Right? I have faith in that chair. And see, that's the thing is, you're right. You, yeah. and, and, but you know what? Let me tell you. <laughs> but, but that's different faith from the faith that we have in Jesus because yeah. that is a visible faith. I can mm-hmm. see the chair. Right. Mm-hmm. But you cannot see the blood of Jesus cleansing you of all your sin. You no. can't see that. You can't even see that. It's a deeper so faith. it's a deeper faith. Deeper, you, know? you really got to have faith with something you cannot see. You can see that. I, I, you know, hey, the look, it looks sturdy. I can sit in it. Yeah. That, that's a human faith. The spiritual faith is something bigger, better, and it's like oh, better promises, the Bible says. For this faith, it, you get a, a bombshell of a deal. Huh? Isn't that good? Yes. Yeah. And, and listen, and people think you're worthy. Like I was studying this book about uh, talking about the prodigal son. You know what the story of the prodigal son, when the prodigal son came up and he says, he says um, um, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. You know what that is? That's pride. That's pride. Yeah, let me tell you this. I had a friend one time and I was listening to him pray and he was like, I'm so unworthy, 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 I'm so unworthy. He was praying like that in my car and I was like, dude, are you kidding me? Are you serious? You know what that is? That's pride. You know why? To think that you are unworthy is to imply that you've done something to make you worthy. Pretty good. Yeah. And that's pride to think that I did something to earn this relationship with God. Let me put it like this. Let me make it real simple for you. You got a king. I got a son. That son, what made him worthy to be my son? What made him worthy to be a prince? Because he's a child of a king. He's royalty. He's got royalty in his blood. What made him worthy of that? 
Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Just born That's into it. it. He, he was born, born into, into it. it. Just born into it. Yeah. yeah. He did nothing to deserve that. He was born with royalty in his blood. And he's so one day going to be a king too because that's my kid. Yeah. He did nothing to earn it. He didn't deserve it. He, what made him worthy is the fact that he was born into it. You know what makes you worthy? You're born again. You're born again. Yes. Amen. That's what makes you worthy. So with this whole unworthy thing, you better cut it out because that's where pride comes in because you're thinking you're doing something to earn it. Well, you're not worthy, but Christ makes you worthy. Yeah, I guess that's true, yeah. God looks at this sinner, he sees a saint. Oh, I see. Oh. Why? Because your faith in Jesus Christ, because of what you put your faith in, my boy. God so loved the world, he gave his son for that reason. Hallelujah. That you believe on him and yes. not perish, but have eternal life. That's why he gave him. Thank you, and he loved you that much to do it. Yeah. Receive it. It's a yeah. gift. The Bible says righteousness is a gift. You have to think better of yourself. Oh, you got to see yourself the way God sees you. That one's thinking you're crap. Huh? That one's thinking you're just crap. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, that's the biggest lie. Yeah. He wants you knee deep in your junk. In your, and the state man, is, it, it dopes your mind up. It's like doing drugs. I was telling last night. Yeah. yeah. I was telling last night how you came out. Man, after what you've been through, he kept you down and how you came out. Look what you're doing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amen. Class, dude. Dude, I used to be so spun out of my mind. You couldn't, man, I'd be so, man, oh, dude, I was so spun. I, you know, you seen those crack addicts? I look, I never did crack, but I, I, I tell you, I look like them. Wow, like that. Oh. You are made up that now. It was a serious addiction, right. serious addiction. I could not break free from it for 15 years, and I tried, and I couldn't. Every time you try, double step, no, no, no. And, and God didn't just fix the problem. Right. Look at me. You know, he you don't want to just do take it from here to there. He takes it way over here. Mm. Period. Yeah. To where I, I hate drugs. I hate. I don't even want to be around those people that do them because I know that's. Just, I, I feel for them. The poor people. The devil's got his hands. Their claws in them. Yeah. It's demonic. You don't hate them. I hate. I, I hate what the devil's doing to them. I hate what sin does to them. You got to separate the who from the do. That's what God did. You know that's what God did on the cross? Are you ready for this? Yes. This is what God did on the cross. When he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Oh, that's good. That's good, yeah. He is separating your who from your do. Jesus did it on the cross for you. Wow. That's what he did. That's good. Wow. Isn't that good? Yeah. God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He's separating your who from your do. So God ain't not shaping on what you do. He's fixing on who you are. It's my boy. Amen. I love that boy. I'm proud of that boy. I, I'm pleased with that boy. And I, it's not about what he does. I don't like everything he does, but I sure love him. I don't like everything he does, but he's growing. That's my kid. He's growing because I'm seeing to that. I who begun a good work in you, I will see to completion. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Because I'm working and you become his workmanship. He created you in Christ and you are unto good, well, you're you're good, you're, you're unto good works that he, I prepared in advance anyway. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. Trust in me. Eyes on me. You'll walk on water when your eyes are on me. You want to take them off, you're going to sink. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. You'll walk on water. You ready for this? Okay, let's go. See if you can handle this. I'm going to give you a little taste of way the master. I want you to hear what these people on the streets, how they respond to how good they are. <laughs> Let's hear it. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I know, I saw one. Of <laughs> Let me turn this on. Let me turn that. Okay, good. Are you guys with me? Yeah. And then we're going to do Bible study, okay? Okay. Right. We didn't even start yet. Hungry. My seal is out. Hungry? Did you call me hungry? Hungry. My seal is out. I got my axe. Yep. Isn't it good? Isn't it great? The veil is removed. Yeah. The, the Bible says when you come to God, when you, come, when, you look to it, when you come to Jesus with looking like in a mirror, and you come with the mask off, veil, the Bible says veil removed. That means the mask comes off. You come as your nasty, ugly, dirty self, knowing what I made of. No, I don't deserve a thing. All you can hope for is mercy. I come that way, but when you look in the mirror, the Bible says, and, re, and, and, and behold the glory of the Lord up in here, you see Christ in me. You see, I'm one with him. The Bible says we're one with him in spirit. When I see Christ in me, okay, you are transformed into that image from glory to glory. And all that is by the Holy Spirit. He moves you into the what you see. 
He takes you from this to that because that's what you see. From glory to glory. Oh, from glory to glory. That means there's some growth process. You're not going to see it instantly. You're not going to see it. You're, it's, you know, so at some point, you're going to look back into past you like me. I look back. You know, I didn't see it. When growth is happening, you don't see it. You ever see little kids, they go up to the, they, they, they put little thing, little marks, the mom marks a little thing on that oh, yeah. to see, because yeah. to see the growth, because they don't really see it. Right. They, they have to see the little marker and see, oh, I am growing. Right. You know, because they got a little marker to show them they're growing. They, don't, they can't see it in and of themselves. Right. It, they got to see the little marker. Well, that's how this is. You're going to look back and say, well, I have grown. Big time. I don't see God imputing my sins anymore. I, I do see my, I could see why God would see me righteous in Christ. I, I can get, understand that now. I, I, I have received the gift. Yeah. It's not a reward for something I've done. It's not wages from the work that I do. It is a gift. Amen. Amen. And I can understand that now. Boy, have I grown. Because yes. I used to put God on the shelf. Exactly. I used to distance myself from God. I used to say, oh, you pathetic, ugly. Exactly. God must be really disappointed with me. Yeah. God's up there thinking, boy, well, you are really a major disappointment. Man, oh man, don't even talk to me. No fellowship for you. I used to see God that way because that's what I'd hear. Yeah, yeah. That's what you hear and preach. That's right. He won't fellowship with a sinner. That's right. Oh, oh. I can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace any time I need it. Ooh. Ooh. Tell me he won't fellowship with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Well, powerful. Oh. Powerful. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. And that's where we need to live from. Most people aren't even there yet. We've got to live from that. That's our new life. Dude, Christ is my life. Yes. Okay? Yeah. You've got to shut out how the enemy sees us and look to where Christ sees us. Yeah, even the Bible even says, if your heart condemns you, God is bigger than your heart. Yes. He's big. The devil's got... Your sin and the devil has got nothing on God. No. That's where, you're, where your sin abounds, his grace His's abounds much more. Yeah. Okay, because it's got nothing on what Jesus has done, what God, who God is living in you. It's got nothing on that. Amen. What we're going to look at, listen a little later, about the one drop of the blood of Jesus is enough to cleanse the whole world of sin. One drop! That's and he gave his whole life. Yes. To cleanse the whole world of sin. Amazing. And if you've got faith in it, you better take advantage of it. Because it applies to you. Who? Mm. Isn't that good? Yes, yes. Yeah, that is really good. Yeah. Like this is good news, and nobody, we're not hearing this. I know, I know we're not. But the devil has her mind. There's pumps. Her ears close to it, and her mind's away from it. You can't no. give what you don't have. If you don't receive grace, if you don't receive forgiveness, if you don't receive unconditional love, you don't have nothing to give. Henry, hmm. Let me touch on something that has to do with this. Yesterday, Dylan and I were walking, and we were ministering. And I, I say God bless you to each person I see. At least I try to make eye contact and say, these people walked by just like, oh, the weight of the world was on them. And I knew it. I could just see this, you know, that, that, that the darkness was over them. And that they might not hear what God has for them. And that's the same. Good liars, right? right now. That's the same. Let me help you out with that. Um, if you haven't read it, Go into John 14. Yeah. When you read Jesus saying, you'll be given the spirit of truth oh, that yes. the world I mean, cannot I mean, see. No. It's given to you. That's why you're able to see yourself. Yeah, if it wasn't for that, those living right. words, yeah. you wouldn't see it. John 14. Okay, here it goes. Ready? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm sorry, I hear you. I, I hear you. You know, yeah. me too. You know, exactly. these guys say just before this. That's interesting. Let me go back one second. Let me go on. Let me see if you can see this. What? To do those things he's told us to do, then he is not our Lord. And he will distance himself from us on the day of judgment, despite our sacrifice of praise. We'll cry out to him, Lord, Lord, and he will say to us, Depart from me. I never knew you. What sentence did you give that firefighter? Did you give him two years, 20 years, life sentence, capital punishment? What he's talking about, I didn't want to go through all that. What he's talking about is, is, is he tells us, shows the story of a firefighter. It's his job to save people. And this house was burning, and he, didn't, he sat there, and he was busy on his phone. He wasn't doing anything while all these people burned to death in the house. And he didn't go in and save them. And that's the point he's making here. Is he need to apply that to our, uh, ourselves and our, our, our thoughts. Are, he, he goes on to say that if you, if you don't have a desire to see other people saved, 
you're, you're not saved yourself. Ouch. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. And, and see, knowing this is what motivates me to get in the jail <laughs> and <laughs> you go in the jail ministry and, and, and help somebody. But, but you can't give what you don't have. That's why you need to be here and, 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 and hear this because you need to have it before you can give it. If you go out there, if you try and go out there and help people when you don't know how to help them, you could, you could do more damage. Yes. You can get your little buttons pushed. They could say something crazy or right. something and you could get an attitude and all of a sudden, see, huh, that's what Christians are like. You know, ain't because you got a little attitude and you acted, you know, you, you didn't act so gentle and kind. You didn't come in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know, filled with the joy and the peace and the patience with them and the self-control. You didn't show that. You showed something else. You acted worldly. You acted, you came out of the flesh and because they're able to press your buttons. So if you, and people do. They just say something dumb. I know. You know. And so if you're, so you got to be prepared. You got to know. And it starts with you got to know what you have. The Bible says, I pray that the communication of your faith might be effective by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. Amen. Your effective sharing of your faith has got to come from the knowledge of what you have. If you don't have it, you don't have nothing to give. Thank so what? Yeah. You also have love. That's yeah. more available to go. But in jail, you love them. Yeah. Because that's what God wants. God just don't want faith. God, God also wants good. You to have love in order to get to people. You see that soul up there? You go and tell about Jesus. Yeah. Because you think in that soul is belong to God. And this is love that you care for them. And it's not about numbers. Don't beat yourself up because you're not out there, you know, do you know you know you know what I mean? It's not about numbers. Carlos is ministering to his buddy Jack. Dylan brought Carlos. You brought these two, right? Didn't you bring them? Yeah, you, you see, it's not about numbers, man. It's, it's just, you know, you, you know, you have a desire to see people saved. That's what he's saying. Not saying you're saving everybody. He's saying you have a desire to be saved because if you don't have a desire to see other people saved, you're not saved yourself. Well, you do. You, all of you have a desire to see others saved, okay? That is a, that's a no-brainer. So don't start putting numbers on it and start beating yourself up because I'm not out there doing it. No. Are you feeling me? Right, yeah, okay, okay. You know it's amazing. You see what I mean? Because yeah. this is not here to condemn you. You could take it wrong, and now your heart's going to condemn you. And, and, but the Bible says God is bigger than your heart. So don't go there either. Okay. Oh, okay. okay, so don't start feeling, you know, oh, boy. You know, you, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what? So don't, don't take this. People say, put this out there, and then they'll leave you there. I want to make sure I'm not leaving you there. Okay, because I, I know the message. And it, it's, it's got to be a real motivation of something you want to do. If, if you do it because you feel you have to now, you're doing it. That's dead works. You're doing it for the wrong reason now. You know what's okay, so don't go from good works to dead works, trying to make it happen because that's, I have to do it. Uh, you know, otherwise I'm not saved. Don't go there either. You're saved. You, know what's you have a desire to see other people yes. saved. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. you know what's amazing is that God's really working in this because these things that you just brought up have happened in the last 48 hours. Yeah. To me and other people. Yeah. Right, right, right. See, that's that's why I'm saying you want to be here. Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah. Hey, Henry. Yeah, yeah. Before you start to study, please may I read this part of John? 14 okay. Real quick. People go to John 14. You can. You got to see this. This goes right on what he's saying. Okay. Make it quick though, because go, I got to go. I'm gonna go from John, John chapter 14. I'll be going from verse 12 to 18. Real quick. John chapter uh, 40, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than me shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will, shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 17. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. 18. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Wow. He will not leave you comfortless. And he says the Holy Spirit that he's sending is the comforter. Yet how many of us have been feeling convicted by the, feel, the Holy Spirit and feeling a sense of discomfort? As if he's the discomforter. Yeah. He is not the discomforter. He is the comforter. 
That's why you need to go with that other scripture as well. If you're feeling convicted, it's just the Holy Spirit is trying to convince you that this is wrong, this is right. He's trying to veer you toward doing right. That's what he does. It's more convincing than convicting. Okay? Mm. And, and convicting is you're guilty. That's to be convicted of a crime, you're guilty. Okay? That's, con that's conviction. Okay? And that's a scripture. That's something they take out of context of a verse in the Bible that says the Holy Spirit convicts us. But the Holy, it actually says the Holy Spirit convicts us of unbelief. That's the Holy Spirit conviction. It also, so, but without going there, the, the, um, yes. the Holy Spirit, he, he's a, he's a, there's a scripture in Romans chapter, chapter 8. It actually says the Holy Spirit confirms within your spirit that you are a child of God. Romans okay, 8, 16, so if you're, going, if you're going with Holy Spirit conviction, but you're not going with that, because that's really clear on what the Holy Spirit does. He says he's there to confirm within your spirit that you're still a child of God even when you sin. 816. Especially when you sin. That's why we have him. 816. That's why he died so we can have the Holy Spirit. That's why he went through all that. That's why it happens. That's why we have it because we cannot keep the law perfectly. Jesus did. What we can, huh? Romans 8.16. Romans 8. 16. Romans 8, 16. Says, uh, that tells you right there what the Holy Spirit does. He confirms within your spirit that you are a child of God. Amen. And if you're a child of uh, let me tell you, if you're a child of God, dude, it's permanent. It, it, it's permanent. If, if Dylan is my son, does he ever stop being my son? No. no. That boy is my son. And the Bible refers to our life in him as being born again. You're born into this. You're his son. He refers to it as an adoption that doesn't get unadopted. It's, it's for life. He, he, that's why he says you get eternal life. It means whatever you get, you get forever. We should have answered to your life. Yeah. You don't lose it. You don't have to fear losing it. You want to fear losing it? It's like, you know, you know, always entertaining the thought of divorce in your marriage. It's like that's what fear of losing your, your salvation is. It's a marriage that you fear. A, a, a divorce is an option. Is she going to divorce me now? Oh, no. Am I going to divorce her? I mean, I could. You know, I might throw it. I mean, I could throw it away. I mean, can I, am, will I? Will she? Huh. Dude, what a miserable relationship. That's not a marriage. That's a torment. <laughs> Not convinced of the, love, not convinced of the love of the mate, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You're not locked into the love. Of the yeah, mate. you're not locked into the love. Like, she loves me. She ain't going to cut me loose. And I love her. I ain't going to cut her loose. Right. Why, why not roll with that? Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Well, why not just roll with that? Because if you roll with that, you'll grow into it. Even if it's not fully there, you'll yeah. grow into that because that's what you believe. <laughs> that's why believing is everything. The Bible says we could. The Bible says. 816. Huh? Oh, 816. Okay, listen, you ready? I want you to hear this because, boy, half the class is gone already. You ready? Here we go. Are you and I honest enough to judge ourselves by the same standard? Think of the fate of that family. Think of his dreadful neglect of duty. He was no firefighter. He was a Judas. I'm going to jump ahead. Here we go. 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 They're hitting the streets. They're hitting the streets. This is called, this is called one to one. And it's where they hit the streets with this camera crew, because you in here, I want you to hear this. This camera crew goes out the streets and they minister to people. They go to, like I said, they go to, uh, they go to uh, uh, colleges, they go all over the place. They go to theme parks, they go to parks, they go to places and they, they minister to, to try and reach people, try and pull them into Jesus. But the only way they're going to pull them into Jesus is if they see they need him. You know what? Before you accept Jesus, you've got to see a need for him. And for that, that's what you use the law for, to convince you, you need a savior. You're not good. You lie, you steal, you're mean-hearted, you're cold-spirited, you're, you're greedy, you're selfish. You're a mess. Your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You don't even know how bad it is. That's you. But they don't do it like that. They don't condemn you like that. They just kind of bring it out of you to commit your own badness. Watch. What do you think happens after someone dies? I don't know. Do you think there's a heaven and hell? I don't know. Do you ever think about life and death? All the time. Um, something. That's a good question. Do you ever think about life and death? Yeah. Do you ever think about life and death? That's a good question. Get a conversation going. Right? Do you ever think about life and death? Yes. Right? That's, see? That's a life. What's on? I, I really don't know. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Yes. Heaven is here and hell is here. So when someone dies, they don't go to heaven or hell? No. So there's no hope of an afterlife? I don't believe in an afterlife. I don't believe in that. The afterlife is a heart, the feeling of love that we have for people or that we leave behind. All the good things that we do for everybody in the world. 
a good thing. I think that if there was a heaven, I would go to heaven. You think you'd go to heaven? Yes, I do, because I'm a very good person. I've done a lot of good things. I try to help everybody. I try to do a good deed every day. What's the other side? Death. As opposed to not dying? Yeah, life. Oh, oh gosh. I think maybe you, uh, I don't know. I think it's like, I th do you think about it? Yeah, I do, actually. I talked to my friend about it, and I think basically, I don't know, but my best guess would be that maybe you, you start something out. You start out, and you might not know exactly what's going on. Heaven. Darkness. I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, what do you think happens on the other side? When someone dies, what's on the other side? Uh, lots of lights. Lots of lights? Yeah. What do you think? Well, I mean, that's a trivial question. I mean, people believe in a lot of different things. Some people believe you get more enlightened. I mean, some people might go, might go to heaven. People might go to hell. Or you might come back reincarnated. You might come back as a tree. See, so what? As a tree. What's that? A tree? There's a tree right here. This might have been Billy right here. When someone dies, what's on the other side? I believe nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I think when you're dead, game's over and that's all there is to it. Um, I think, uh, I don't know. What, I don't know. Probably, you know, a lot of answers. And probably you come back again. You guys believe in heaven? Yeah. yeah. Do you believe in hell? Yeah. I believe that we're on, we're yeah, at the present time. We're in hell and when you die, you just go to heaven. Oh, we're in hell. Yeah. Are you having a good time in life? It's cool. You know, it could be better. You know. Is it cool? It's, it's all right, you know. Well, it's not hell, it is if you're having a good time. Whoever said hell was a bad place. Oh, so hell is like kind of it's, a lightweight heaven? Yeah, 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 it's a mystery. Are you making this up as you go along? Pretty bad. I believe that if you're a good person, then you will go to heaven. Are you a good person? Yes, I am. Have you lied? Yes, but that doesn't make me a terrible person. Have you stolen in your life anything at all? Yes. So you're a lying thief? Well, I'm a lying thief, but that doesn't make me a killer or a murderer. Have you ever hated anybody? Yes. The Bible says whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. What's your name again? Annette. Annette, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart by your own admission, and you're saying you're a good person when you're not. And that's called self-righteousness. As far as the day that judgment calls, I think I'll face him and tell him. If it, there's a guy say, you know, I'll face him and talk to him about it. I mean, God's supposed to be your friend, right? Listen to this letter. Wow. Yeah. You gotta look at those. You have all that. You have the whole playlist. I'm watching all of it. <laughs> That's beautiful. I mean, it's that great. It's why it, oh. it's great when you see some of them actually turn people. They actually all yeah. of a sudden he, they all say, "You know what? Maybe I do need to look at my Bible." He actually yeah. turns atheists into believers it, right there on camera. You I see it. That. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how he went through that and told 